A new report into Australia's regions shows young Australians are increasingly heading back to the bush from our major cities. Across the nation, more than 20,000 millennials have moved to the country, but so far WA hasn't benefited from this millennial migration trend. Futurologist Rocky Scopoliti is here to talk us through this. Good to have you with us again, Rocky. Firstly, what is behind Australia's millennial migration trend? Well, thanks for having me on the program, Monica. And look, this is quite fascinating, this millennial uh, migration, if we can call it that, um, uh, because it's not uniformly sort of benefiting all regions, as in the case of Western Australia. Why is that? Well, there's a variety of factors, and I think skills probably uh, plays a fairly major role in that uh, and uh, I would also say on the back of COVID, we uh, are now very experienced with remote working, flexible working. Uh, and so we're seeing this in the services sector. And so the industries, I guess, in Western Australia, as well as, uh, you know, the, the, those skills required in rural and regional Western Australia may not necessarily be the right fit. Interesting. Regional Queensland appears to benefit from a, uh, a population inflow from all states. What have they got that WA doesn't? Well, well, that's a controversial question to respond to, but let me let me have a go. I think it's lifestyle factors. Uh, the other thing that I would say is as well is that Queensland geographically is more suited to those uh, migrating out of Victoria or migrating out of New South Wales. And I think, again, particularly in the information services sector, uh, it plays, you've got sort of, you know, time change differences also that uh, that's quite favourable or creating favourable conditions, I think, for um, those in Queensland. Rocky, we have a few viewer comments on this. Lance Hollett writes, country towns, we need people to move to us. Also, we don't have the infrastructure for you to move here. And Rocky, you do actually have concerns that infrastructure isn't going to keep up. What impact will this have? Yeah, well, absolutely. Um, if we just pause for the moment and think about the strain on our healthcare infrastructure, on our educational infrastructure, uh, you know, these are not going to accommodate a, um, you know, a rapid migration from urban living into rural and, uh, uh, and regional areas, and it will strain the, those systems absolutely. And we've got no short fix to that, right? Because attracting, I think, those kinds of skill sets has been quite problematic, particularly in healthcare as well. So these are policy settings that are, are going to need to be uh, looked at and addressed. And you have just alluded to, to our next viewer's question from Natalie Rundell, who writes, the thing that's stopping us, the poor medical services that are available. Yeah, and Natalie, you are absolutely spot on. I mean, healthcare is a significant concern and the inadequacy of medical services could be a significant, you know, um, barrier to, in fact, attracting a younger demographic back into our regional and rural communities. Augustine Morris says jobs, the high cost of living, including rent. Now, Rocky, city rents, uh, they may have millennials looking to regional accommodation because they are so high at the moment, but how's the jobs market there? Well, again, if we look at the knowledge workers, you know, as I mentioned before, Monica, all you need is connectivity and uh, some computing equipment and you're good to go. Uh, but if you're talking about skills like in manufacturing or if you're talking about skills in, you know, mining or other heavy industries, then those jobs may not be available uh, to those kinds of workers. Uh, and so, you know, now, if we stop also and have a think about this, Australia's got a major skills problem full stop. Uh, and so is this going to create additional stress on urban skills availability? On that note, futurologist Rocky Scopoletti, thank you very much for the chat. Pleasure.